best life Made a couple M's with my best friends Turned on my L's in the last hands You see the whip pulling up, it's like screw Dream pulling up, I'm like screw hey guys welcome back to my channel if you haven't already go ahead and hit the subscribe button that's right down here and click the notification bell so you're notified every time i post a video let's go ahead and jump into this missing person case this case is really strange and really weird and there's a whole lot of questions and not enough answers so let's go ahead and jump into this case the case that we will be talking about today is the case of Miss Bianca Jones. Bianca Jones was an adorable two-year-old that went missing while in the care of her father, DeAndre Lane. Now, there is so many questions to this story that need to be answered. So many strange things that just does not make sense. Um, a lot of things that aren't connecting and just a lot that I would like to know personally and I'm pretty sure her family would like to know. Bianca's full name is Bianca Lily Jones. She went missing December 2nd, 2011. The story that the father told allegedly is that he was carjacked. A car from behind him signaled for him to get over and that he had a backlight out and he believed them pulled over to check the back light and that's when somebody hopped out of that car and basically stole his car at gunpoint. Um, he said in interviews he basically pleaded for this person to let him get his daughter out the back but the person did not allow that mercy and drove off with the car with baby Bianca in the back. It's also reported that the car that the carjacker was driving, another person that was in that car took the car and drove off behind the first car, which was DeAndre's car. So it is allegedly reported that two men were involved in the carjacking. He reported that the man that stole the car was an African-American male, about six feet and 185 pounds. He reported the age to be between 25 and 30 years old. And he said the man was wearing a black shirt, black pants, and a brown and black baseball cap. He also reported that the man was unshaven, so a little scruffy. It is reported that this carjacking happened when DeAndre Lane was on his way to Bianca Jones' mother's house, whose name is Benika Jones. He was going to go pick up some more clothes for Bianca because Bianca was going to be staying with him a little bit longer than anticipated, mainly for Bianca to work and that sort of stuff. According to him and his nephew, he had dropped off his nephew at school earlier before heading to Bianca's house. At the time where he dropped off his nephew and headed to Bianca's house, it is reported from the nephew that Bianca was in the back seat in her car seat, relaxing, strapped in, totally safe. Sorry guys, I'm gonna apologize in advance. I'm now using natural light, so if the lighting looks weird, that's why. This is where the story starts to get so weird and starts kinda not making sense in a way. Instead of calling 911 after his car was carjacked, he actually ran to a family member's house, one of Bianca's family members' house. And Bianca's aunt, who was there at the house, is actually the one that called 911. Hi, my name is Mary, and my niece was just stolen in a vehicle, and her father is really upset. Somebody must have hijacked him or something, and my niece is in the car. Did they use a weapon on him? He was not really talking to me. It is reported that when he arrived at the house, he was hysterical. He was crying. He was blubbering. He couldn't formulate words. He was just overwhelmed with emotion. And it was hard for anybody to kind of understand him, get the story out, what happened. He was saying, they took my baby. They have my baby. Stuff along that line. But he was not saying exactly what happened, where Bianca was, where it happened, or anything. Once Bianca's aunt called 911, that is where they made the report. That is where 911 was contacted for the first time. And you could hear in the 911 clip, in the 911 clip, that he is like barely speaking. Bianca's aunt is trying to get information out of him, asking him what happened, what happened, you know, what what does the car look like? What what trying to get information out of them so that they can give the police so that the police can go and find Bianca. 
bump the car at this point, find Bianca. There is a child missing. Eventually, when he is able to come to, he does give the police the information they need. And that's where things kind of start to get more strange. 10 minutes after the 911 call was placed, they did find his car. And again, this is where things start to get super strange. They found his car less than a mile from where it was reportedly stolen. When he reported that it was stolen, he reported it was stolen on Bush and Custer Street. They found his car, it was on Euclid in Philadelphia. So it wasn't very far away at all. It was less than a mile and they found the car within 10 minutes. And another strange thing, when they found the car, the doors were open, the front door and the back door and the engine was still running, which is also strange. It was kind of left abandoned with the engine running and the doors open, which kind of set a chain of events that would change DeAndre Lane's life forever. On top of having his daughter missing, because they found the car the way they found it, less than a mile from where it was reported stolen, still running, nothing seemed to have been missing from the car except Bianca. They kind of started to suspect that DeAndre Lane had some foul play, that something was going on, that he was not telling the whole truth, they began to focus on DeAndre as a suspect. Things just weren't adding up to the police. They were confused. And again, they had lots of question. what is, questions. What is going on? Why would somebody steal a car and then leave the car but take the child that didn't make sense to them when they brought deandre in for questioning it was a lot of questions it was very rigorous and they kind of at that point had already came to the conclusion that bianca was dead they had came to the conclusion that deandre did something to bianca and that she was dead she was gone and at this point they were basically asking him and questioning for a body where they could find the body they just want to lay her to peace stuff like that and be and deandre was so hell-bent on he did not do nothing to her bianca bianca was okay they, they they stole the car and bianca was in it there was two main reasons why police felt like deandre lane was suspicious one reason was because when they carjack a car they take the car that is their main purpose um the police did tell him when they take a car usually they will take uh the child out whoever's in the car out and will take the car and in this instance that didn't happen they left the car and took the child which was strange another reason why deandre kind of lit up for them is that he had had a couple of different run-ins with the laws he had been arrested a couple of times um mainly on drug charges and weapon position but there was a case where he was battling with his ex-wife for alleged assault so they felt like he was already somewhat of a violent person. He was already somewhat of a criminal. Um, a lot of the times with criminals you see when they do heinous crimes, that heinous crime is not their first crime. It's a bunch of smaller crimes that kind of build up on top of each other to get to that heinous crime. So they felt like it made a lot of sense. The last person that quote unquote seen Bianca in their eyes was DeAndre and now she's nowhere to be found. So he must be the culprit. He must be at fault. Now let's kind of get into DeAndre as a dad because Bianca was not his only child. DeAndre had seven other children as well as seven children's mothers, real seven baby mamas. So he was like a that he had a lot of children a lot of children's mothers and once this happened once news got out that he was suspected for playing a role in bianca's disappearance they were shocked his exes his babies his his children's mothers were shocked not only that his children was shocked and they really went to bat for him a lot of them began to vouch like he would never do anything like that to any of his children his children as well as their mothers all said that he was a phenomenal dad he was a great dad they trusted his judgment they trusted him as a father this did not make sense the type of person and the type of dad he was um police did get a search warrant to search his home once they searched his home they found one thing in particular that stuck out to them. Um, really two things, but I'll get into the second thing a little bit later on. One thing in particular really stuck out to them. They found a paddle, like a wooden paddle, um, but it was a homoid paddle. So it was duct tape. It was like a stick with duct tape and cloth wrapped around it to make this homemade paddle. 
they found that and they thought that that was strange. When they asked DeAndre about it and um, questioned some of his children about it, the children did say, along with him, that, that is what he used to discipline the children. He did not use a belt. That is what they used when they got spankings. Um, that is what he would use. He supposedly used it the night that Bianca went missing and majority of his children said that this is also something that they used on him. Now, an interesting thing is his nephew Trayvon Lane actually spoke out in an interview with True Crime Daily and he actually witnessed this spanking happen. It is reported that DeAndre spanked Bianca because Bianca was, he was potty training Bianca and she had peed in the bed. So she was in the living room and his nephew Travion Lane was there to witness the spanking. He reported it was nothing malicious. It was nothing over the top. It was nothing that would qualify as abuse. He even went so far as to say that he even went so far as to say that DeAndre even playfully tapped him a couple of times. Not because he was in trouble or anything, but just because they were playing. But he did say after the spanking, he seen Bianca. Bianca was fine. She was perfectly okay. Um, he did say he witnessed DeAndre basically, you know, after spanking her, telling her, you know, next time go to the potty, stuff like that. And she was okay. Of course, she cried for a little bit. She's a child, just got punished. But she was okay. She was healthy. She was walking. He seen all of this. Now, we kind of start to get conflicting statements at this point because DeAndre's fiance actually said that he spanked Bianca in her bedroom. Um, she says that he was not in the living room. He spanked her in the bedroom and that she heard the spanking. She heard him spank her. Um, and she did not see Bianca after she was spanked. She said she heard a loud whine aloud crying and then silence that is what she said now now i just want to be clear that his deandre's fiance is not his child's mother deandre's fiance um this particular fiance is not bianca's mom this fiance is his live-in fiance they do have a child together um and this fiance later would go on to testify to kind of put up the nail in the coffin at his trial she said this is what she heard. She told uh, police that that's what she heard. A whining, like Bianca was like crying really in pain and then silence. And she didn't see her no more after that. Police at this point felt like they had motive and a weapon as to what happened to Bianca. At this point, police, police believe that when DeAndre disciplined her and spanked her with a paddle that he actually spanked her to death. That she ended up dying as a result of this paddle and this whole car hijacking story was made up and it's not the truth and it, it's just a cover up for the fact that he murdered her um, a night or two before she went missing or was reported missing. There's more conflicting statements later when the same nephew Travion claimed that he actually seen Bianca getting her coat on that next day after the spanking. And again, he seen her yet again when he was in the car with her being dropped off to school. So Travion claims to have seen her a lot um, during the, the spanking that allegedly killed her and after the fact. However, there was more conflicting statements when one of DeAndre's ex-friends, Rico Blackwell, said that he did not see Bianca. He said that when DeAndre pulled over to say hello to him or good morning or something along that line the day that she was missing, she didn't. he didn't see Bianca in the back seat. He said that he seen an empty car seat. When police asked DeAndre about this later in questioning, DeAndre kind of said like, well, he doesn't know why he would say that. That doesn't make sense because Bianca was there and he showed him Bianca. Probably sitting along the lines like, say hi. You know, that's something I do with Autumn. I'll be like, Autumn, you know, say hi to somebody. Probably Probably something along the lines of that. So he was kind of confused as, confused as to why this Rico character, why this Rico friend would lie. But like I said, it was another conflicting statement because his nephew had said that she was in the car when they dropped him off at school. And yet at this point when Rico saw, when Rico saw DeAndre, she was not in the car. So... 
things just get very strange. We have a lot of people saying, yeah, I did see her. A lot of people saying, no, I didn't see her. It also did not help that the police did administer a lie detector test to DeAndre and DeAndre failed the lie detector test. Now his lawyer tried to say that the reason why he failed is because it was not administered right. It was not that he was lying or being untruthful, but just that the questions they were asking were questions that it's easy, I guess, to pick up deception on or something. But basically, the test was not administered, right? It was an error on their end and not that DeAndre was actually lying. Now, when the police searched the house, they did not find anything of suspicion other than the paddle. And they did test the paddle. I do want to say that they did test the paddle for any forensic evidence, uh, DNA, any blood, anything. And the paddle was completely clean. The one thing they did find uh, on the house, how in the house, however, was a spot of blood on Bianca's pillow. A little spot of blood, not a really big spot, but again, it was a little spot. They also searched the car and there was no blood found in the car. However, they bought in cadaver dogs later on in the investigation and the cadaver dogs alerted to two spots. One spot was in DeAndre's car, the car that was hijacked, and the other spot was in Bianca's room. Now when cadaver dogs alert, they are alerting to the smell of decomposition, um, human decomposition. So they are basically alerting to the fact that there's a smell of a dead body here there's a smell of decaying flesh here at this point once the cadaver dogs alerted they felt like they had enough to bring deandre in they felt like they had enough to basically charge him with bianca's murder although they did not have a body they did not have um really any other evidence that she was murdered. They felt like this was enough, thus the cadaver dogs picking up a scent, to bring him in and basically try him for Bianca's murder. Now, when DeAndre was tried, they did try him for first degree felony murder, along with child abuse in the first degree. At his trial, his fiance did testify against him, basically saying that what I just told you guys earlier. She heard Bianca in her room being spanked with the paddle or whatever, being punished, and then it went silent. And she did not see Bianca after that. However, in a strange turn of events, Benika Jones, Bianca's mom, actually was on DeAndre's side. She actually testified for him saying that she doesn't believe that her daughter like is dead. She doesn't believe that um, anything malicious happened to Adora in the sense that DeAndre murdered her. She doesn't believe that DeAndre could do anything to hurt her child, although multiple family members of hers, such as her mother and her brother, and I believe the aunt, have spoken out on multiple occasions saying that they think that DeAndre had something to do with her disappearance, that there wasn't a carjacking, that Bianca is dead. But on the stand, Benika did testify that she doesn't believe that Bianca said and she doesn't believe DeAndre had anything to do with her disappearance. To add even more confusion in the already confusing case of this beautiful missing two-year-old girl, um, multiple people after the trial and during the trial claim to have seen Bianca on multiple occasions with the same person in the same area in the same house and those multiple people on multiple occasions were told by police that they're not going to look into the tip because they believe that Bianca was dead so the police didn't even investigate these tips um that we know of that, that we know of the police didn't even go out to this house to see if Bianca was actually there one woman in particular by the name of Nikki Gibbs who at the point was a former police officer reported to have seen Bianca she said that she went to this house for a I believe she said domestic violence call a totally unrelated call and as she was talking to the person at the door just having a conversation with the person she noticed a little girl come out of from the back of the house kind of like this like she had been crying and she said that she looked at the girl and at the time it didn't register but after about two days she had seen a picture of Bianca on her computer and was like wait a minute that's the little girl I've seen in the house. She, Nikki Gibbs says she is 100% sure that the little girl she's seen in the house was Bianca. As I stated before, multiple other people have came forward saying they've seen 
Bianca either playing in the front yard of this house um, or walking with this, this particular woman. They have reported this on multiple occasions. And like I said, on multiple occasions, when they report this, the tip is not taken seriously. And they are told, even Nikki Gibbs was told that the police think that she is dead and that they will not be looking into the tip because she is dead. It sucks because a lot of the people who claim to have seen Bianca was not put on the stand to testify. As I said, Nikki Gibbs was, but a couple of the other people who claimed to see her, I know one man in particular, last name by Salisbury, he had claimed to see Bianca. Again, with the same woman, um, the same, you know, her eyebrows, he says, the only difference is he says her eyebrows have been shaved. But as you guys have seen in pictures that I put up, Bianca has very distinctive eyebrows. Her eyebrows are very bushy and they are shaped a certain way. So a lot of the times with people that end up kidnapping children or anything of that nature, they will try to get rid of or cover or take away distinctive features so that people won't notice them. He said the Salisbury guy said that when he seen Bianca, her eyebrows were shaved, which would make sense if that was Bianca because her eyebrows was bushy and very distinctive. And what is one way to cover that? To shave them completely off. He was not put up on the stand. A couple of the other people that reported seeing Bianca was not put up on the stand. The other, only person that was put up on the stand was Nikki Gibbs. And apparently that was not enough. Once the trial ended, the judge sentenced DeAndre Lane to life in prison without a possibility of parole. Even though there was no body to prove that this murder happened, the cadaver dogs and the lie detector was enough to ultimately sentence him to his fate. Um, he is currently serving life in prison right now um, with no possibility of parole. And it is sad because there's still a lot of unanswered questions as to what happened to Bianca? Where is Bianca? Is she okay? Was she kidnapped? Did the carjacking happen or did it not happen? There's still a lot of unanswered questions. Now, when it comes to theories, there are two main theories that I have seen all across the internet with this case. First theory, which is the obvious, is Bianca is dead. Some people believe that Bianca is dead and they believe the obvious, that her father is the one that killed her somehow, whether it be spanking or whatever the case is. He is the one that killed her and made up this whole carjacking story to cover that. Um, there's another big theory and this theory is so strange and it blows my mind it is mind-boggling but the second theory is actually that Bianca's mom had something to do with it but Nika Jones had something to do with this whole kidnapping and it was a stage basically for her to take Bianca and be spiteful to DeAndre now before you guys shoot down this theory let's get into the basis behind this which is so strange Bianca's mom, Bonica Jones, was actually having threesomes with DeAndre and his fiance, a multiple sexual ex escapades on multiple occasions. Not only that, I guess it is said allegedly that Bianca did have some kind of problems with the fiance. They didn't always get along necessarily. Um, not only that, it is said that Bonica did have a lot of problems with the fiance. They did not always get along necessarily. Um, so I think that is strange. And the most damning evidence yet, DeAndre's lawyer hired a private investigator to basically investigate this, this woman in this house where people claim to keep seeing Bianca and got the weirdest results. The results of this investigation was that and again, this is all allegedly, we have not seen any blood proof or anything like that. But it was that the woman who lived in the house or that owned that house or who was renting the house, the woman that was the head of the house there, whose house that was, was related to Bianca, some related to Benica, some how um i believe they say that she is supposedly a cousin a distant cousin um and he did this was confronted this information was given to Benika in a true crime watch daily interview and Benika said she had no idea what they were talking about she does not know who the person is which is 
definitely strange. Like when I heard that, I was just like, okay, that is definitely weird. And the fact that she was so gung ho for not sending DeAndre to jail or that the daughter was okay or something like that, I did think that was weird. Another plot twist that came later on after the trial was on DeAndre's fiance's end. Um, she was talking to True Crime watch daily true crime daily and she basically told them that she didn't lie about her statement but that she did not tell the complete truth she said that the police had pressured her in a lot of ways not only that but she said she was afraid of going to jail herself so the thing that she did not tell the full truth on is that it is true that she did hear DeAndre spanking Bianca. It is true that Bianca was crying, but she said that she was not crying out in any significant pain. Not only that, she says that she did hear Bianca talking after the spanking happened. So that would have made one hell of a case if she told that in court. Um, That along with the Nikki Gibbs statement, basically of her saying that she saw Bianca and if a couple of more people stepped forward that saw Bianca, that would have made a hell of a case. And I feel like even if he did get life in prison, he would have got a possibility of parole. Um, my personal opinion on the case is that I just have a lot of questions, guys. I have a lot. It's just so sad because, like, if he did not do nothing to Bianca, where is she? Is she okay? Is she safe? Um, did his did her mom actually have anything to do with it? It's sad because this man lost his life, literally, because now he has to spend his life in prison. Not only that, but he lost having his daughter in his life. And like I said, again, if he did not do nothing to his daughter, he has to live every day knowing that they've essentially stopped pretty much looking for her because they've chalked her up as being dead and they've chalked her up as him killing her even if she is out there um Bianca would be at least nine today nine or ten I will put information down below if you guys have any reports at all um a sighting even a girl that may look like her anything at all i will try to find her last age progressed photo for you guys um so you guys can keep an eye out please keep an eye out for bianca as soon as i heard this case i was broken into pieces i had so many questions and just felt bad for all ends for the mom the mom is now missing a child for the dad because if he did not do anything he's in jail and most of all for Bianca because she was ripped away from her family for whatever reason and we have really no answers so thank you guys so much for watching please comment down below if you have heard of this case and I'll link a number down below in the description box if you have any tips for you to call and just make reports and say if you feel like you've seen her say something um i said previously but this case did happen in detroit michigan so guys if you are in that area if you're visiting that area if you have friends or family or anything in that area and you guys have any information please reach out and try to say something and tell somebody something i love you guys and i will see you guys in my next video